International students, particularly from India, struggle to get through education while balancing work, navigating a new country, maintaining high grades, and a multitude of other challenges which leave many seeking a way out. Some of them even resort to taking their own lives. This is all too familiar for the Lotus Funeral Home and Cremation Center, located between Toronto and Peel, who send the bodies of loved ones back to their families in India. Some of those who do manage to survive these difficulties might still find themselves falling into crime, prostitution, or working in the drug trade. Not only is Brampton facing this international student crisis, across Canada, student deaths continue to increase. Joining us today is the uncle of Prince Gollin. Prince came to pursue his Bachelor's of Business Administration at the Centennial College in Toronto. He also had a work permit. One of his ambitions was to become an entrepreneur. Unfortunately, his body was found in Lake Ontario, Scarborough area on November 9th. His death certificate indicates the cause of death as drowning. Thank you for joining us today, Mr. Rakesh. Thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. Of course. Uh, could you start off by telling us a little bit about your nephew? Yeah, definitely. Like uh, he was a young kid, like just finished 21st birthday in September. 2021 and he came like when he was 17 and a half like to pursue his bachelor's in business administration and he finished his school like by age of 19 and a half where well, like within less than three years wow. and currently like he was in the area Brampton area for last four years altogether but he was on work visa currently so he finished his school apply for work visa so now he was doing two jobs one was as a contractor and second as a part-time uber wow. and he was doing pretty well like say overall he was very healthy sound physically mentally and he was taking care of everything what he can do as an international student we came with the dreams and he was pursuing all his dreams his goal was to be entrepreneur and he was right on the track like he was his PR like uh, permanent residence process was in process mm -hmm. so his goal was to get his permanent residency and start entrepreneurship journey so everything was very well uh, as of Monday but what happened between Monday and Tuesday, we all are like very much shocked with the with the with the incident itself, like entire Golan family is shocked with the incident. So there are big family waiting in India. So we have like 40 family members. Mm -hmm. so, so he has family support. He, he he's he's like pretty much that that's I can get into details, but that's that's pretty much I want to say like who he was. Yeah, it sounds like he was very hardworking, a smart smart human being just trying to make his way in the world and for audiences that aren't aware uh, your nephew known as prince was discovered dead in lake ontario what was your reaction to this tragic news like i don't have words to say like uh, i don't think like i have enough to answer this question because it's a tragic for all of us like as i i i, I was a mentor to him so because i i was knowing those moves like every year we used to do counseling and all so overall like say we don't have words to say like we are just waiting for one day at a time wait for the body now waiting for the police report no, we are we are not getting much support as though but we are just taking care of the body so funeral is on saturday back in india mm -hmm. so his body is going to be transport by tomorrow so we have the flight booking in air india going to new delhi tomorrow at 11 55 a.m so i don't have answer for that question but we are shocked like as a human i can say like i don't have words to answer of course yeah. what were you told by police we are still in dilemma so police say like we don't have answers for all the questions we gonna be keep an eye we gonna be getting back to you so we rely on it we have full trust in the administration and police and we are hopeful like one day we will have enough to convince ourselves what happened between those 24 hours mm -hmm. and when did prince come to canada as a student rakesh it was in 2017 in fall, so I can get you the month, and but I I know like he came in fall 17, so I I believe like some around summer time in 2017. Mm. And when he was studying here, was your nephew in touch with his parents in India? Pretty much like even a week before he spoke to his dad and just his dad was very normal reaction. Hey dad, what's going on? Like how, how things are. And just regular, I talk to my parents same way. Like say we give updates, like what's going on? Any, any issue this way, that way, communicate. So he was very much in touch with his parents, his grandmom, mm -hmm. and everyone else other in families as well. Mm. And were 
you, were Prince's family, uh, friends or family told about any changes in his life? That's what the question which bothering us like all over together is because he was living with his cousin a healthy life. His bank account has 66,200, his wallet has $900. He's just supporting his family like his sister came to pursue a diploma in public uh, administration. And he, like last semester, I believe he's going through the second semester as an international student in Brampton area. And overall, like he, he was supporting her to his hey, sister, don't worry about fees, just focus on your education. So that was his wording to like three weeks back. And mm. he paid his sister fees for whole semester, like 9,000 some change. Wow. And to focus on education, don't worry about jobs or anything else outside. Yeah, so overall, like say, I will say very positive kid, like uh, mm -hmm. from all aspects. So roommates are, they are like cousins from maternal and paternal side. So they have family bonding and they were there for three, four years. Some of them are like coming, coming four months back, but there are few who are there from, his employer was living with them as well too, because they were doing some contractor work with the commercial and residential paint. So all all positive even till monday like three o'clock he called his cousin and said like don't wait for me on dinner i'll be doing uber tonight mm. so everything was fine up to three o'clock on monday morning on 8th of november mm. but what happened between three o'clock to next day five o'clock no one knows like no signals like sometimes we have a habit to say like oh what this life is what this canada is what this whatsoever like we do go through day to day we, we leave sign because he finished like the, the try to understand he finished his first job from 7 a.m to 2 p.m mm -hmm. he came home he has his lunch he make a tea for himself at 3 30 around 3 3 he called his cousin like i'm going for uber don't wait so if you look we try to go through the sequence of the day we called his employer. He's a white person. He was there in yesterday viewing. I spoke to him personally. Did you notice anything? Because he, he was working for you with you on Monday. So he was very much shocked as well too. Like he has a normal day. He worked throughout like 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. And he left in healthy mindset. Mm -hmm. So no clue to answer your question. Mm -hmm. And you as his uncle attended and will be attending his funeral in India. What do you suspect was the cause of death? What factors led to this sad event? That's a, that's a big question. Like, say, we wanted, say, like, uh, administration, like, local administration or government, like, or someone's support, like, to go to the root cause because this is not the first one and this is not the last one. But we want to, like, request the administration to go to the root cause and try to see, like, if we can take this as a example to avoid, like, so much in future events because it's... it's, it's it's a family loss for us, but this can be a lesson learned for others as well, too. Mm -hmm. What can go wrong at, at the age of 20? Because at the age of 20, like if I, I recount my days, we are full of energy, we are full of enthusiasm, we are full of hopes and dreams. So it's not like, say, we we, when we have those values, like we, we came with dreams. I came in student visa in 2006 fall uh, to join my master's degree in Long Island University back in New York. We, we live our life in Brooklyn. I, I grew up in Brooklyn and I did finish my PhD from same school, but uh, we never gave up. So giving up is not a question in the family history. We are here to live our dreams. We are here to achieve what we want to do in life. We don't have school and colleges back there so close. So for me, like if I have to go for my PhD, I have to go 500,000 kilometers away from my family. So I made a math, like if I don't see my family every day, why don't I pursue from US? So so we don't see family because we don't have these opportunities back home. Mm -hmm. So came, like I finished my PhD, I'm a director for biotech, but I, I love what I do. So I, I'm, I'm living my best days of my life, but that's what we came for. Like it's been 15 years, like if you fast forward, but I'm summarizing those 15 years in one line. But to answer your question, like we have a lot of like dreams, like I was communicating entrepreneur is nothing beyond dreamness. Like I'll be honest with you. And he was going that way. So I will say like, say positivity is all over. Like he financially was doing very well. So we don't know what to suspect at this moment. All the hopes are on the administration. Mm -hmm. Yes. And just building off of that, your last uh, answer, what would your message to other international students be in the wake of this tragedy? 
I think this is a big question and I will say like don't take my answer as answer but try to dig into by like say it's a, it's a two way street if I answer your question one is like from parent side they need to be very careful like what they are getting these kids into because after high school they we, we protected them by 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 the high school like I have kids I don't talk to this don't talk to stranger don't go with anywhere but after high school like you are exposing them to the real world they have to make decision from laundry to bank transaction next day mm-hmm. so if they are not exposed to that lifestyle so that's they should limit they should let them graduate and they should let them grow through like uh, bachelors so that they, they they get exposed to the outer world and then let them make decision after that so that's one thing which need to be like worked out then the second thing is like if government is focused on education as a business i'll say like it's a billion dollar industry but government should provide a support system to them in each school and college they should have international office for counseling whether it's a financial counseling whether it's a career counseling whether it's a paperwork let them have that space where they can go and speak because they're not going to speak to their parents about their problem that's what the problem is mm-hmm. and they don't have anyone to speak to so what what we can expect so we want government or these colleges to step up put another office with 10 employees and provide them an international student launch where they can go and check out and then try to be normal if there something is bothering them they need a place to talk they don't have it i don't think so no exactly they do need an outlet to speak and and somebody who has the resources to be able to help them through whatever they might be going through as an international student it it's a scary situation sometimes and what would your message be to the canadian government in terms of providing a safe environment for students i think that uh, that can be like this message can be like taken in multiple aspects but i my only message is to step in this is the right time to step in if mm-hmm. government wants to involve they should not delay in involvement whatsoever they need to understand where the problem is and if i am not here to un- make them understand i'm here to give them a message like step up because they are the only one who can address this problem mm-hmm. I, it's my family I, i i might not be the right person to address because i'm equipped with the resources where i can take care of my family whether it's a funeral or whether it's whatever this time is but i think government support is needed and as an international student myself going through masters and phd uh, i can be assured like say there is so much can be done or learn because we did had international student counseling offices and directors where i go went there personally when dad passed away then you have to go through visa things and all so we already get counseling from the right people and right time so mm-hmm. what i see is like is is a government who can take care of of these things another thing is like uh, it's it's easy to rule out like for me i lost for my family everyone lost the kid but losing is not the answer we need to go and f- go to the deep down to find out like what is missing mm-hmm. yeah. so those are things like where we cannot help as individuals but we society as a government they can step in and they can use that administrative and try to go to the root cause because i was like very surprised like to see other 20 21 year old kid in the funeral home so i was in funeral home for last 3 days there are four bodies sitting there between 20 and 24 mm. it was fourth one mm. it's very surprising and i'm talking only about one funeral home so if you do the multiplication there might be 500 to 600 bodies every month going back so it's is scary so if you do like that like someone do this math and try to understand like say it's is scary 500 kids dying every month mm-hmm. so so it's only government who can do take care of anything like this is disaster it's it's, it's 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 a big problem mm-hmm. yeah And Mr. Rakesh, in your opinion, are universities and colleges doing enough to support international students? Is there anything else that they should be doing? They they that's what this counseling whatever they need to do, they need to create that environment where they can bond, they can gel, they can get their questions answered because for uh, like us the I don't see financial is uh, everything because he has money sitting in account he has money in his wallet he has paid for his sister debt family has no need of money sort of so he's like self sufficient man there mm-hmm. but whatsoever it's only universities who can do because they are paying money to university they don't have enough money to do any, anything else they don't have money to buy insurances mm-hmm. i think university should take care because whatsoever in, university can provide a support system through insurance what's what's wrong with that when university can provide university is the only answer but it's going to go through 
system change. It's not like, say, one line answer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I agree with you. And lastly, before we close, is there anything else you would like to share with us or, or say? No, I don't think so, because I, I just want to say thank you for your time. I really appreciate and I, I, I really like pray and like request you to and request Canadian government that take care of the issue, try to save these kids. They have life, they are paying taxes, so they are not harming government. They are here to live their dreams. So putting positions like we want to get 4,000 people, 400,000 people every year, I think they need to work ground up. They need to build infrastructure, then let someone else come because it's not one person died here. It's, it's a dream lost for whole family mm -hmm. and generations because there are four cousins living together and now they have they lost the fifth one. So it's not easy. I'll say like next, next I, I, I was there with these kids. I slept with them. I eat with them. I console them to best of my knowledge, but they have to write the next chapter and they have to face the truth. And that's true for everyone here. So my humble request is to like through this conversation is like someone can understand what, what I'm trying to say is like take charge of the problem. That's the only way like we can see hope outside. But other than that, I don't have, but I want to say thank you again. Well, we thank you as well, Mr. Rakesh, for joining us to bravely share your thoughts and feelings about this difficult topic. We at Inc. TV wish you and your family some peace during these trying times. Thank you. Keep, keep the family in prayers. Thank you. Yes, we will. Thank you. All the best. Thank you. And thanks to the viewers at home for tuning in. This has been Ava Blackwell at the International News Channel. Remember to subscribe, like, and turn on the bell notification so that you don't miss out on any of our latest content.